what are domain and range? Really simple idea, right? We've got a function, right? Any function, and by the way, we've learned function notation before. How would we write in a nice, concise way, like name a function, say f, right? How would we write it? F. Just fx, like that? Ah, it, so I, I hear some language and I hear some symbols, right? I think I heard f of x, and to indicate the of, yeah, we put brackets around there, okay? Or parentheses if you want to be really fancy. Now, what we mean here is f is the name of a function. We're going to put in values called x into it, and then something else will come out. Right? So we know how functions work. You're familiar with functions, just different language on a new idea. Domain and range are simply, where can this function go? Where is this function allowed to exist? Right? OK, so how are we going to work this out? Right? f of x, its domain, right? Is it's, and this is, you have a, um, a, a little table there. right? So its domain and range, its coordinates, domain, are about the x coordinates, right? So these are the which which set of axes is these? Is this the up and down one or the across ones? Across. This is the hor horizontal one, right? This is horizontal. Okay. So when you have a function, its domain is the x values, the horizontal values that it's allowed to take on. I'm going to give you an example of this in a second, right? But these are the things you can put into your heading, right? The coordinates are the x coordinates. The axis is the horizontal axis, and what we call it, right? The values where the function exists. So this is your third row on your table, right? We call that domain. Okay. Now we have a corresponding thing for y values, for vertical values, and that's what we mean by range. Okay. So its range. This is interested in where can I go up and down on the Cartesian plane, right? So therefore, it's about the vertical values. OK, now let's just think about some very simple functions that we already know about. In fact, if you have a look at the bottom of that page, I'm going to start with one that we've been dealing with a fair bit, quadratics. We're very familiar with these. I don't think it's the first one. It's part B. OK, so if we just have a look, part B, I know you might be wondering, why is it question 7? I'll explain that later. Uh, part B, it says y equals x squared plus 5. Okay. Now, the easiest way to work out where are the domain and range going to be is just draw a picture. Doesn't have to be beautiful, but the picture will help us answer this question easily. Okay? So underneath where you're writing the function, just draw a really small set of axes for me. Doesn't have to be beautiful, just enough so we can actually put some stuff on it. So here's my set of axes. Now, what kind of shape will x squared plus 5 be? It has a name. It starts with a P. Parabola. It's a parabola, right? So we know there's going to be a parabola here. Is it going to be facing down or is it going to be facing up? Oh. Up? Okay, how could you tell, by the way? Positive. There's a positive value at the front of x squared, right? Um, the coefficient is positive. So it's going to be going up like this. Can you tell me anything else about this graph from the numbers that are on there? Plus 5 would mean it's going to go up 5, up yeah. five units. Yeah. We're going to take a regular old parabola and we're going to raise it up 5 units. OK with that? So go ahead um, and draw on your axes something like this. That's a bit off. You get the idea. Use your imagination. OK. Now, I'm not going to stress you guys out about the graph too much because the graph is not the point. The graph is just an instrument. Okay? How can we use this to work out the domain and the range? Well, where can this graph, where can this function go horizontally? Are there any places it's not allowed to go? So I'm thinking about what values of x, remember when you like substituted things in to here? I'm asking what values of x are you allowed to put into this? and get a reasonable answer at the other end. Can you put in values like 0? Really? Yeah. f of 0? If I put 0 into where x is, do we not get a reasonable value at the other end? I'll get, I'll get a result, right? I'll get 0 squared plus 5, which the last time I checked was 0 plus 5, five. which is 5. Thank you. OK, I get it's late in the afternoon. Come on, brains, we can do it. So 0 is fine. How about like? 10. Can I put 10 in here? Yes. Yep, you get 10 squared, 105. My graph doesn't look that big, but could I put like a million in there? Yes. Sure, why not? I'm not going to draw that, obviously, but there's nothing stopping me. How about negative values? Can we do negative values? Yes. They're fine. Can you think of, I'm going to pose the same question to you again. Can you think of any values that you can't put into this function? Yeah. Can we put decimals in? Let's try one. 1.1. Uh, 1. 1. 
1.1 squared, it's like 11. That's 1.21 plus 5. I, it's fine, right? And that's why this graph doesn't have any holes in it. It's not like, yeah. So I can put anything I like in here in terms of x, which means the way I would say this is the domain, I'd love you to write this with me, the domain of this particular function is, and you can say this in lots of ways, but the way I'm going to encourage you to say it is all real values of x. Okay? And there are some fancy ways to write this, especially if you don't want to use all of these long words. This is going to look weird, but it's much more succinct, and I promise you'll get to like it. You can write your x, right? And then draw this Greek letter epsilon. It's like an e, but it's curvy. Okay? And to indicate real values, we use, just look up for a second and watch the way I do this, because it's not that hard, but you want to watch me do it. Uh, you can do kind of this fat looking R with two lines that are vertical, and then you, then you do the rest of the R. Did you see how I did that? Just go bang, bang, and then do the rest of the letter. That's how we indicate real values, the set of real numbers. Okay? What does the F mean? So yeah, this means, for now I'm just going to give you a sort of informal definition, which basically means X can be any of the real values. Okay, it has a more technical de formal definition than that, but we don't have to worry about it for now. Okay? This domain for x values, you can't put in any x value that you like, right? For instance, let me try one. If f of x were this function, whoops, square root, if I put in 0, f of 0, right? Everywhere I see an x, I will replace it with a 0. Is that okay? Yep. So I get this. Yeah, 2 times 0, which of course is 0. 0 take away 5, so I'm getting this. And your calculator doesn't like this, does it, right? It says math error because I'm like, don't take the square roots of negative numbers. That's what it's telling you to do. Right? Okay. okay, so we know that we can't do 0, which is no surprise. Here it is. See how it's not on the graph? There's no spot on the graph there. So I probably can't do these values either. Like, they are probably a bad idea. You see how they don't intersect with the graph? So whatever, whatever that spot is, now what's that spot? It's two and a half, right? Are you allowed to put exactly two and a half in there? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> um, one of the great things here is you could just check, right? Like, take the value, put it in. 2 times 2 and a half is five. 5. The square root of 5 minus 5 zero. is 0. Can you take the square root of 0? No. Yeah. A square root is the number that you multiply by itself that gives you that number, right? What's the number that you multiply by itself that gives you 0? Zero? Zero. 0. So that's totally fine, right? So here's what I'm going to say. The domain, it's going to be about the x values, right? I'm going to go from two and a half to the right. Anything bigger than two and a half, like three or four or five or eight million, right? Not to scale. Um, anything to that direction is fine. So I'm going to say greater than or equal to, what did we just say? Two and a half, right? Two and a half. Nailed it. OK, can you look at the graph and now tell me about the y values? Where does the graph go? Where doesn't it go? Yeah, so the graph doesn't go below zero, yeah? And remember, I'm thinking up, down now, okay? So here's zero, and up here is one, two, three, four, five. Down here is negative. Say it again. Can we just make it D and R? That's a really good question. Can we shorten these to, rather than domain and range, can we just write D and R? I would highly encourage you not to. Here's why. More so with this guy here. When you've got things that can mean other things in maths, right? You don't want to make things ambiguous, and so I'd prefer you to state something and say, I know exactly what that is. There's complete clarity that I know what you're talking about, as opposed to D for distance or D for displacement or any of the other things that it could stand for. Okay, so it's six letters. By the time we finish arguing about it, you've already finished writing it, yeah? Is that okay? All right, so the range of our Y values, right? It's going to be, yeah, I'm going to look at zero, and I'm allowed to go above, but not below. Okay. Can we be equal to? Hmm. Oh wait, you can. Now we we tried this out, right? We tried this out. If we put exactly x equals two and a half in, we get exactly y equals zero out. So it's um it's included. It's included. Okay.